whatever this is, like, whatever. <laughs> that wasn't necessary. Hi, I'm Samantha Jones. I have a PhD in biomedical science, and today we're gonna to be looking at some cartoon chemistry. <laughs> Banana peel! Don't! What did you say? Oh, no. Hey, oh, yes. what the? SpongeBob. <laughs> My sister and I watched so much SpongeBob growing up. Sorry, Mom and Dad. Slipping on a banana peel is definitely something that you see in a lot of cartoons. How legit is that? Could you really wipe out by stepping on a banana peel? Actually, there was a research group uh, that a few years back asked that question. And so they looked at the slipperiness of a shoe sole on a floorboard versus a shoe sole on a banana peel. Um, and what they found was that a shoe sole stepping on a banana peel, um, it was actually six times as slippery. That's as slippery as a ski is on the surface of snow. Um, and so then they also tested a bunch of other fruits um, like apple peels and tangerine skin, and they found that the banana peel still won out. And so it turns out that what makes a banana peel uh, so slippery is the mucus. And so if you look through a microscope um, at the inside of a banana, so that white part, um, you'll actually see cells. And when you step on a banana peel, those cells will burst, um, and then you're left with this layer of slippery mucus. Um, and so scientists think that that probably comes from sugars. Um, and I guess that would make sense because a lot of really sweet fruits um, are the ones that produce the thickest mucus. Will a banana peel make you slip and do a backflip? Probably not, but it can definitely do some damage. So beware. All right, bring on the next one. <laughs> Popeye, he's a crazy looking dude. <laughs> so could I get super jacked, super muscly if I ate as much spinach as Popeye? No, definitely not. It's actually kind of a myth within a myth. Uh, so why did Popeye eat spinach? You have to eat it to get health, strength, and vitality. I grew up thinking it was because of the iron in spinach that he was eating it, but there is actually no account of Popeye saying it's the iron in spinach that makes him strong. Uh, what he does mention once in a drawn cartoon is the vitamin A that makes him strong. Yeah, spinach is a good source of vitamin A. Uh, it contains beta carotene, which is converted to vitamin A in your body, and it doesn't make you strong, but it is really good for you. Too much vitamin A, though, can also be really dangerous. So beta carotene, which is what you get from spinach, that's a form of pro-vitamin A. Um, so if you eat a ton of it, it'll turn you orange, but uh, it's actually still pretty safe. Popeye, looks pretty normally colored here, but really if he's eating that much spinach, he should probably be orange as well. Preformed vitamin A is actually the scary version of vitamin A. Uh, it's the form that you get from most supplements and medications, and too much of that is what can kill you, um, and it can also cause birth defects. Back to that iron myth. So Popeye never said that he was eating spinach for iron, and if he was, it was a bad choice on his part because even though spinach has a good amount of iron on paper, when you eat spinach, there are actually a bunch of compounds in it that make it really hard for you to absorb the iron. And actually recently, I came across a paper, um, it's a study that was done just a few months ago, I believe, um, where they gave athletes spinach extract and they found that it actually made them stronger. Um, and so that had nothing to do with vitamin A or iron. Um, it actually had to do with a hormone that's found in spinach extract um, that helps you build muscle mass. Popeye was not taking spinach extract. He was just eating an insane amount of spinach and that definitely would not have made him hulk out. Definitely not like this. So my best guess is that Popeye's canned spinach was fortified with a combination of amphetamines and uh, steroids. Okay, what's up next?
Weasels. Yes. Who framed Roger Rabbit? I love this one. Yeah, all the characters in this are so ridiculous. Judge Doom, spoiler alert, he's a tune. So from what I remember, his goal was to spray the dip, or tune acid, uh, all over Toontown to make room for freeways and malls um, and essentially <laughs> create the world that we're in today. Um, and so I guess the question is kind of, could the dip or tune acid actually kill a tune? So first off, this movie was made in a way that's very different from how animated movies are made today. So this was created, the tunes in this were created by hand, which is like just mind blowing. What they would do is you'd have these cartoons, they would be sketched, um, and then they'd actually be transferred over to an animation cell. Um, and so it's kind of like a, think of it as a sheet of, kind of like a sheet of plastic. Um, and then from there, there'd be artists that would come in and they would hand paint with acrylic based paint um, each of the frames in this movie or whatever was being made. So you could get, you know, a few minutes of animation and it would take thousands and thousands of these painted animation cells, which is unbelievable. And so Toon Acid, um, or the dip, uh, is actually a combo of turpentine, uh, acetone, and benzene. Um, and so actually all of those are paint thinners, so individually they would definitely erase an acrylic-based tune. So in combination, definitely 100% this could kill a tune. Yeah, chemistry checks out. So that's a wrap for Cartoon Chemistry. Cue the music. Mm -hmm.